come to the middle. Come over to the middle, some of you, please. Thank you. Fantastic. If you want to fill the middle up as well, these two, these, we'll just use these two bits. That'll be fine. Come and fill up the two parts in the middle. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Can I just say, great to have you here, just straight off the bat, just to say to Colin and Phil, good morning at the back there. Hope you're okay there. It's important, that conversation. Uh, just, just, to, just to say... Um, to Richard and George and all the South Portlanders, thanks for having us. Can we give them a great round of applause, the church here? Thank you so much. For those who are here for the first time, there's, there's a buffet lunch afterwards, so don't be in a rush to go. Um, can I just say an enormous... This is, this is a, I thought it was a bit of a risk because we got this day planned a couple of weeks ago, but there was another event in the region that we wanted to support. So you, you didn't know this. We cancelled this date and we changed it. And the only other date we could get diaries was the start of December. Now, I know December is a really quiet month for you guys. And I mean... For, for all those people who want to repent of gluttony before we start, because I know in the next month you'll be having 10 Christmas dinners, you'll be going to the Sunday school party, the youth party, the adult party, the elders party, you'll be having all this turkey, so I think you need to just repent before you even start the month. And some people really love Absolutely, Christmas. <laughs> S spoken like a newly accepted minister now. Give him five years and the belly grows even more. We've all had the Vicar of Dil Dib Dibley experience for Christmas where you've eaten that much turkey. But So great to have you here. So I, We had no idea how many would come um, at the start of December. So I'm absolutely knocked out to see as many as we do have here. And that's absolutely fantastic. But you know, this probably, for most of you leaders, will be one of the only chances this month you have to receive. You're going to spend the whole of this month giving out to people, going, going through all of the stuff that we call Christmas. And um, just, I'm really, really praying that you've made a journey to be here. Some have come from Shrewsbury. Phil's here from Shrewsbury. Great to have Phil. If you're here for the very first time, could you just show us a hand if you've never been to one? Could we give these people a great welcome? <laughs> Part of leadership teams. And uh, every minister here knows we can't do this by ourselves. There used to be a day 30 years ago where we were known as one-man bands and the pastors did everything, and those days have long since gone, and teams are such a vital part of what we do. So if you're on a team, thanks for being here, thanks for sparing the morning. But, you know, I, I just came along, and I'm a bit of a geek at times, and I was playing a CD, and it was a, one I got from New Zealand when I was over there. And there's a, there's a new, new worship tape come out. And I, I said to Margaret, let's count how many times they mentioned the word Jesus and, uh, on this song. And it was 20 times. And I was just praying in the car with my eyes open. Uh, <laughs> just, Lord, for these guys and girls who are here today, I just want Jesus to speak to them. I'd, I'd like Jesus to refresh you. I would like Jesus to help you for any who are going through difficulties. I'd well, I want Jesus to help celebrate with you in the victories because we're here because of him. And um, so many songs now about a million stars floating through the universe and 
deep sea fishing that go on and you sing all these songs about floating cannonballs of blessing and you know a lot of these songs they're very poetic but they, they don't mention Jesus much and um, you, you've got to sort of guess somewhere in there is, a, is something to do with God and, and but that's just my personal <laughs> bias coming out there at the start of the day yeah It's up the first line is in this time of desperation. I'm digging a hole for myself here. No doubt we're going to seek a few stars and bury a few pits and watch out for a few snakes. But uh, I was just really, really, really just focusing on Jesus this morning. Now, I was saying to Margaret, if you're not careful, you go to a meeting and you've got very little expectation. It's like, it's a regional day, I'm going to go to it. But I really want to up the ante. No, no pressure on Paul but we're expecting God to speak to us today. Yeah. Well, I am anyway. I'm expecting today, when we go home and get into those cars with our leaders, you'll say, you know, that was a good investment of my time this morning. You could have done a lot of other things. So let's stand together. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit just to begin to minister as we begin to worship, and let's just begin to get ready to worship God. And Father, this morning, Lord, I thank you for Jesus. Lord, in the midst of this next manic month, we as the church will be some of the only people who will be talking about Jesus. Lord, people will be talking about eggnog and the latest gimmick and the, this drink or this John Lewis advert and all the stuff. But Lord, Christmas is all about Jesus. And Lord, our life is all about Jesus. And we're, we went into leadership because of Jesus. Lord, for me, I'm only six days away from celebrating 50 years as a Christian. December the 7th, 1968, I gave my life to Jesus. And Lord, I can't believe how the years have gone by. And Lord, I just want to say on behalf of these wonderful people, we love you, we adore you, and I pray, Lord, for everyone who's journeyed here today I pray that you have something to say to them, something to encourage them in, something to challenge them in, something to reveal more of Jesus to us. And so, Lord, as we just start our morning together, Lord, we, by an act of our will, we put away all of the stuff we've got to do this month. And it's busy and it's great and it's wonderful. But this morning we come as sons and daughters, as sons and daughters. And we're saying, Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Spirit, we welcome you into this place as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship, shall we?
you know, because I'm a leader, I know sometimes things get tough. I know sometimes not everybody looks forward to Christmas. I know sometimes as you reflect on this year, there may have been some times when you feel you've lost a few battles and that the enemy has surrounded you. And I would just want, want us to sing this song and then we're just going to pray for a minute or two. Because, you know, every year when I was a pastor, the first Sunday of the December, I always said, some people this year have lost a mum, they've lost a dad. Some people lost a baby. Some people have had awful stuff happen and it's not always great and I just really feel that God wants to minister as we sing this song maybe new to some of you and I think well, most of us know it but I, I walk around the chairs praying for every chair um, before the meeting and they were singing this song and I, I just felt I wanted God just to minister to this so if this hasn't been the greatest year of your life and this part of you saying I can't wait for December the 31st. Well, as we sing this, just let's let the Holy Spirit begin to minister to you. Thanks, George. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You know, one of the great things about belonging to something like Elim is that we're not alone. We're brothers and sisters fighting the same battles. And we're in this together, folks. And you may have had a great year, and the person next to you may not. This time next year, it may be different. It's called life. Stuff happens. But we fight our battles because of the strength and the blood of Jesus. And I just feel I'd love to pray over you. And if you're comfortable, and if you're comfortable to put your arm around or grab someone or stand with someone, just, just so we're, we're together in this. You don't know the person next to you, maybe the person who needs just God to be so real to me at this season. I'm in the privilege, I know one or two of your private circumstances and some of your private battles. But God knows every battle that we go through. Some have faced surgery this year. Some have faced financial hardship. Some, have, as I said, have gone through the pain of bereavement within the family and within the fellowship. I'm going to pray and maybe we'll just sing that again. If that's okay, then we'll move on. Just pray for the person next to you as I'm praying. You just don't know, to your left and to your right, would you pray God's blessing upon them? You don't know where they've been, what they need, but we know that we're surrounded by God. And we're surrounded by His love, and He knows what we need today. He knows what we need. Just pray for each other. I'll pray over you in a minute, but just pray out loud. Lord, bless my brother, bless my sister. I may not know their name, but you know how many hairs are on their head. You know what, what they need this year. You don't know, Lord, whether it's been a great year, Lord, or a pretty tough year. But, Lord, we want to pray for one another. And we want God to surround us. And, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, we fight the battle. Lord, some of these men and women are going to stand in their platform over the next three weeks and they're going to smile, sparkle, and be confident, even though their hearts may be broken. Some of these leaders, Lord, will be leading people, even though they, they feel awful, but they'll put all that to one side to serve you. But Lord, we declare this place to be a safe place where we can put down the mantle of being a leader and we just go back to being a son and a daughter. And Lord, this is how we fight our battles. In Jesus' name, come Holy Spirit. Would you minister to my brothers and sisters, Lord? And Lord, we're not just singing a song, Lord. We're declaring the truth about the blood of Jesus and how strong you are. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Je you keep praying, the band will sing. Oh, I'm surrounded. Oh, I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded by you. still works today. I pray the disheartened would get a heart, Lord. The depressed will get joy. The sick will get well. Oh, Jesus. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
surrounded by you. Oh, I'm surrounded by you. Father, we give you praise. I just wonder, before we finish this time and move on in our service, we've just prayed for each other, but I wonder if you could just think this year of one good thing that you want to praise God for. There could be a breakthrough. It could be back in January. There could have been a salvation. It could have been a baptism. It could have been a restoration of a prodigal. It could be some great news in the family. It could be a pregnancy that's gone to have a baby. I just don't know what it could be. I know there's people here freshly married. You know, there's all sorts of things. And in just a moment, I would like us to raise by just thanking God for that one thing together for this year and just to speak it into the air for something that you are grateful to God for in this last 12 months. And this is how we, it's an act of praise and worship. I don't know what yours will be, but just think for 10 seconds. One thing this year that you want to give God thanks for. And I would like us all to raise our voices in, in sort of just a 30 second prayer of praise. God, I thank you for this. So let's do that right now. Father, this, I want to. give you praise Lord you are worthy to be praised thank you Lord for salvation thank you for the building thank you Lord for answered prayer thank you Lord for your grace your mercy your presence we thank you Jesus Lord we thank you you are worthy to be praised you're worthy to be praised oh God we bless your name we bless your name Lord we give you praise we give you praise in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that you are a good God. You are a good God who we celebrate as well today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please, yes, give him a round of applause. That was great worship. Amen. Thanks, guys. Take a rest. Make it one song before the speaker comes on, okay? Wow. I really enjoyed that. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a lot been happening in the region that we want to just to say thank God for and also just to bring a little um, knowledge to. I'm going to name Neville to come out first, if you would. If you remember, was it September or October? It's September, wasn't it? We had Franklin Graham in, in Blackpool. Neville and lots of the guys from Blackpool did an awful lot of work for it. And I know Neville would like, A, to thank you, but give us some news about what happened there. And then the mission. Yeah. So... I've, I've spoken about it before, before it happens, and I asked you to pray, so thank you for your prayers. And I just want to read out a list, really, of some things that I, I want to thank God for in relation to the, um, the festival. So there were 9,000 attended, 9,000 people attended over the three nights. The, at the venue, there were over 400 decisions um, recorded. There were 60% of them were first time, 25% were rededication, and there were about 200 online. Um, we've know 95% of these people, we know the follow-up that's happened with the churches of 95% of them. And we're still hearing stories of people that have responded on the night but didn't go forward. And so we're, I'm hearing stories all the time and I'm so blessed by it, it's incredible. Um, a couple of examples, Kay counseled two children on the Saturday night who clearly understood what they were doing and given their lives to the Lord. They came down with their parents, both of whom had given their lives to the Lord the previous night, you know, so which is brilliant. There was a 65 and a 69-year-old who gave their, their lives to the Lord, um, a couple. She was rededicating her life to the Lord, and she'd been praying for her 69-year-old husband for years and years and years and years and years. He gave his life to the Lord for the first time. Brilliant. There was a... And, and these are just... Many, I just hear stories all the time. I'm in a privileged position to hear stories all the time. Even this morning, I heard stories. It's great. Um, there's a drug, drug addict and a 
drug pusher who got saved and had to move out of the area to start a new life. Um, there was one night there was a hundred year old um, person got saved and a, and a three year old got saved. <laughs> I was at um, a leadership conference and I chatted to people from Fleetwood, um, the people in their church. There was a, you'll, you'll know uh, someone who used to have a surname called Jones. Well, they were prayer walking and they chose um, Jones Grove to pray for because they they're the same surname they used to have. And they prayed for Jones Grove, went round. Guess what? A couple called Jones got saved from that, um, <laughs> from that thing there. Um, Liverpool people. I was just speaking to Phil Fell and he's got people in his church. A couple came independent of their coach and they came up from St. Helens and they're now in their church. Uh, it, absolutely fantastic. I'm, I hear it all the time and talking to these people and it's just story after story. And afterwards, we, we did healing on the streets shortly afterwards and we'd had a, a few sort of fairly lean months when we'd been doing it where we'd just been praying for sort of five or six people or whatever. All really good things, fantastic. There were, straight after the festival, there were like 20 people came forward. Somebody bought us donuts and coffee and uh, it was just brilliant. There's new people coming into churches around. Um, we've had people in my church got saved. There's a couple that rededicated their lives and it's impacted them. Um, some of the benefits were training and focus for many church people. Six month of focused prayer walking and personal evangelism, which has been a real focus. Um, I'd, I'd, I was overseeing a team of 600 odd counselors and supervisors and that they all took a step, loads of them took a step up and did stuff that they'd been, you know, been frightened of doing probably beforehand. One of the highlights for me was seeing my team in action, in, absolutely incredible, and it's, it's really impacted me to see uh, uh, my sort of a more immediate team. Um, and it's, in, I, it's going to impact my ministry, I know, this, this whole thing. The authorities in the area were absolutely gobsmacked by the organization of it, the police, um, and everything like that. And moving forward, there's, um, in terms of church unity, we're building on it, and there's a platform to move forward. Um, we've all got different expertises that we've gained from doing this festival, and we've um, now got groups that are coordinating the prayer in the filed area. Um, we, we know we can put on an annual evangelistic event together. Uh, we've got a team um, in, on that. We've got a team involved with training and um, events and um, love in action. I don't know if I've done my two minutes yet, but that, it's just incredible, and I, and I thank God for all of that. It's amazing. Just finally, and so thank you for your prayers, just finally to say that I'm taking on a role as us, taking on a role as the regional missions, international missions rep, which I'll be starting to, to do now. And if you've got an interest in that, I've, one of my jobs there will be to build a team, and I, I need a, a, a small team of people that want to get involved in, a, in the promotion of Elam missions in, in the region. Um, if you'd like to do that, please can you speak to me? So thanks. Thank you very much. Amen. We give God the glory. Amen. I was there two nights um, at, the, at the festival and it was great. And there was a six foot gay Jesus outside, six foot, a seven foot thing with, with the, 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 the lesbian and gay people outside with a rainbow Jesus. And it was just great. Our people just blessed them, bought them cups of tea and everything. And God just moved because whenever God's moving, there's opposition. So we thank God. It's just great. You know, the days of mass evangelism are not over. It's just fantastic, and that organisation, the heritage is amazing. But I won't go there because I'll be end up in tears. I start talking about Billy. But there we go. One of the best things for me this year has been a start to see a dream come true in Preston. So John, come and tell us. Would you mind you come and give us a quick update with Preston? As you know, we closed the church a number of years ago, and but good news. Yeah, so um, if you remember, there was a, an Elim church in Preston that was uh, up and running for many years. That closed um, probably three or four years ago now, Kevin, and it was taken over by um, a, a plant from the Southern Baptist in Texas. In, and interestingly, that church, it kind of mushroomed and grew for a while, and then uh, we were involved in the, the, at the end of the life of that church and the close of that church last February. And we've been praying into really how we can establish a new city church in Preston. So um, we've, not, we've not started Sunday services. We've done a few outreach events um, into Cardinal Newman College, which is the sixth form college, the Catholic college. And we've hired the theater there and, and started some, a few evening 
kind of events. And we've been looking for how we can staff it. So um, I, many of you will know Dele Odrunde from the Lighthouse. He's coming and joining us in January. And his remit here. Hello, Dele. Hello, Dele. <laughs> Um, Delhi will be, oh, will have the oversight of Preston and we we're kind of spending a bit of time in Chorley with us and then we'll kind of build in strategy and everything out there in Preston. So, hello Delhi. Um, so, yeah, so p please pray for us. We're new to it, but Delhi's got a heart for it. We've got a heart for the city. We've got some resource behind it. I've got to say, without, I'll embarrass him, without Kevin's support, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing in terms of staffing and kind of the location of where we're beginning, et cetera. Kevin's done an amazing job through the NLT, so thank him for that. I know he's got a heart for that. Um, so watch this space, and um, we're not promising anything major, but I'm praying that pretty soon there'll be a, a strong functioning church in Preston. Amen. Amen. Do we agree with that? Well, Delhi, would you stand? John, would you go near Delhi? Would some people just gather, gather around John and Delhi? But we could all put our hands out there. Because church planted. You know, guys, not that we're in competition with Scotland, but we've got six church plants in Scotland. We've not got six in the northwest yet. So put a challenge out to you. Just think about it. Father, we just pray, Lord, that Preston has started. And Lord, they're putting a good foundation. And Lord, thank you that Delhi has been prepared to leave the lighthouse and the comfort of a team, and Lord, to come and start to pioneer. Lord, I pray you'll bless him and his dear wife, Lord, as they, they move over and that they'll settle in quickly. And we pray in Jesus' name, by this time next year, Lord, that Preston will be established. And Lord, we want to pray into the DNA, Lord, of Preston. Lord, we want a church that will flourish in Preston. We don't want a church, Lord, that will hang on by the skin of its teeth for another four years and close again. We want a church that will be established and grow. And, Lord, way past we're all gone to glory, the church will still be functioning. And so, Father, we pray for the strategies and the structures and the finance. And we pray for, Lord, the equipping. We pray against any opposition. And I pray that this church will be planted. So, Lord, we pray for John, Lord, as the figurehead there, as this campus is being set up, Lord. And, Lord, there's changes in the staff going on all the time in Living Waters. We pray for there. And, Lord, we pray for Delhi. And we just pray, Lord, that your will will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Being as Richard is the host church, he said, could he just show you a video of his wedding? Um, no, it's not, not his wedding. Um, but I was at your wedding. How long ago was that? 15 years. Come on, come on, just come tell us. Show us a little video. I was going to say something, but I won't on the back of that because I'll get shot. Um, very quickly, um, I'm sure all of you have probably heard of the LICC, London Institute of Contemporary Christianity, based in London, but doing incredible work. Um, based around the country. On Saturday the 19th of Jan, we've got a video to show, hopefully, just in a minute, that lasts for a minute. Uh, we've got one of their guys, Andrew Belfield. Uh, we've had the privilege of Andrew working with us over the past year, doing um, a little bit of consultancy stuff with us. And they, they run these Imagine Church Days, which is all about how can we make whole life disciples, something I'm sure all of us as church leaders are really interested in. How can we do that, raise up disciples? And so we've got Andrew coming. It isn't our event. This is an LICC event. It just happens that it's being hosted here. Um, but really want to encourage you to consider coming along. It costs £15 uh, for the day. Uh, runs from 10 to about half past three. And I'll let Andrew do the, uh, the rest of the talking, if we've got that. Hi, my name is Andrew Belfi from LICC and I'm really pleased with to tell you about today on January the 19th, 2019, which is going to be run here at Lakeside Church in Southport. And the day is about whole life discipleship and about how we can help to create a culture personally and in our churches where people can actually see physically what it's like to be Christians in our everyday spaces. It's going to be full of discussion, it's going to be some teaching, there's going to be films, there's going to be group work. I really promise you it's going to be a fantastic time. We've done these in hundreds of locations around the country. Um, who's it for? Well, it's for you. If you're a church leader or a part of a team, um, if you're a school teacher, if you're a doctor, if you're a small group leader, um, if you're just interested in how to make disciples today in this generation, it's for you. So please come along, I really look forward to seeing you. 
just some quick announcements. If the band want to come back, we're going to sing one short song, Georgie. Without 47 stanzas, it would be great. Uh, just a second. Just to say some quick announcements other for, the, for the coming up. Great to see Gus and Karen there at the back. Great to see them. They walked in late too. But, but they've, they've come all the way from Hollyhead. That's a fantastic... I mean, I am so blown away. I think I'm, go I'm going to make December permanent. There's more people here than normal. It's good. Um, just to say, December the 10th in, in Liverpool is the Merseyside Meal. January the 9th, remember it's Elim's Prayer Day. Um, I've been asked to look after the one in Scotland by the NLT, so I, I won't be at the one down in Huddersfield or Birmingham. Please choose where you want to go. Um, February the 13th to 14th is the Theological Conference uh, at Swanwick. In February, I hope you're thinking about coming to that. February the 16th, any MITs? By the way, all of the MITs who went for their interview got accepted. Um, for or Would you just stand up, those people who are in the room? Just give you a quick stand up if you went for the MIT. Two, three. There you go. Give them a big four. Round of applause. God bless you. Uh, in At... Next June, they'll be ordained, and as you know, it means taking your brain out and put a potato in, so you'll be one of us <laughs> along the way. No, that's not true. That's what we used to say. Welcome to Elim. <laughs> Sync with the rest of us. Um, welcome aboard. MIT's at St. Helens on February the 16th. Um, we, we, we've just yet to get, and one th new thing next year, we're looking to have an elders and sort of deacons training day, or if you call yourself a leadership team, Gordon Neal, who is um, just retired, is going to be doing both in Scotland and here a training day, morning, most of them at about two o'clock for people who are elders and deacons and leaders, because it's staggering. Nobody here does it, but when you leave, I go and talk to your leaders, and no one has a clue what happens um, because they they don't they don't understand the whole thing of the, the sort of the constitution and things that we need to abide by. So we're putting this morning on. Gordon will come and do it. Um, we've not got a venue yet or date, but we'll hopefully get that sorted out in the very near future. Um, regional hubs that we're going to have in the spring that's coming up. June the fifth, we've got. The Elim Mature Veteran Lunch together with all the retired ministers. So we still look after you when you've retired. I'm so pleased to know that. Because um, I'm not that far ahead. I put that in place recently. I've not bothered the last 15 years, but I think it's very important to honour the retired members of our thing. No, actually, that was Andy Taylor's suggestion, so I can't claim it. So that's going, uh, we, we've nicknamed them the Incredibles. So that's all coming up. August the 19th to the 23rd, Steve has got a whole list of the Ignite. If you've never been to Ignite, I would really challenge you to think about coming yourself, bringing some people with you. The place is not far off being fully booked, but there's local accommodation. You can, you can camp for those who like to feel the grass on your bottom. Um, it doesn't, doesn't do for me at three in the morning, but that's another thing. But on-site camping, some people love it. Local B&Bs are available. Um, there's a list of the speakers who are up there. Duncan Clark, Stuart Blount, John Lacey, Margaret Pete, and me. So that's going to be the, the, the line-up <laughs> for there. I think that's everything. Oh, yes, the final thing for your date. Again, one of the challenges all the time is dates. So we're trying to give you maximum amount of notice. Next November, the 6th and 7th, is going to be our away day at, in Blackpool at the De Vere Hotel. We did it earlier this year. Two days. What did, what did I say, Margaret? Six and seventh. Is that two days? Was that two days? Oh. Six and seven, is that two days? Is that what? <laughs> Would you? So the two days. Two days. Sorry. I could be in the spare bed tonight, so pray for me, please. <laughs> November the 6th to the 7th, 24 hours away, two days. Margaret, <laughs> Margaret, Margaret, just, you've got to turn your fingers that way round, Margaret, when you do that. Uh, 
The other way around is a very rude gesture. Come back, Holy Spirit. What date was it, Margaret? So please, don't book another day. Don't, don't go, don't go, don't do any other event on those days, please. Last time we did it, people had married a cow and bought a wife and they're going to this event and that event. Give you a maximum event, put it in your diaries. If you don't have a diary, carve it in blood. So it's going to be a, a great time. Chris Cartwright, will, our general superintendent, will be taking names of who's there. That's absolutely <laughs> great. Nearly there. Um, you know, we've got back just about an hour. We want to give the speaker an hour to speak. So by 20 to 12, 20 to 1, we'll finish. And then there's some lunch. Um, but we're going to stand and sing. But just to say, as we sing one more song, just stretch. If you need to nip to the loo, nip to the loo now. Um, let's just stand. Come on, let's get together. And I'll, I'll introduce Paul after we've sang this song, okay? <coughs> November 6th and 7th, just for those who may have forgotten. It's two days. Okay, let's just sing this song, shall we? And get ready for, for the word of God.
seated, everybody. You know, in ministry, you know lots of people. And some people you, you like never get to know too well, but you meet them at conferences, you meet them, you, think, you know them, but you don't know them. And um, in the last six months, I've got to know Paul Hudson. Um, I've known him for 25 years, but I didn't really know him. But the last six months, it's been a great joy to welcome him onto the, onto the NLT and get to know his heart. And he loves his pastors already. And it's good to have someone who's just started in this job. It's also great to have Paul's mum and dad with us. I don't know whether they're hiding at the back there. Could you give Mr. and Mrs. Hudson? <laughs> They've been in the ministry for years, been retired now for 15 years. They pastored a lot of time in Dewsbury, as I remember when I first started. I think David was in Dewsbury, he had hair. Uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, there, when he was a young man, and I'm getting up there now. We were just talking about, they've just given me some advice about retirement. <laughs> so, and if it makes money, I'll do it. But the, so, that's so, so it's great to have you with us, and we pray that you'll be really blessed. And it's our joy to have, many of you know Paul from the mission days, but welcome him now as a regional leader for the Midlands and North East. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. It's a privilege to be with you. Nice to see uh, some people that I know and others I don't. And it's nice to be on the other side. Um, dark side. No, not the dark side. The, the other side, Lancashire area. And uh, it's good to be here. And thank you, Kevin, for the invitation. And uh, it's nice to be here with my parents in Southport and doing a great job. It's fantastic. Do you know that? I, I, I just love the... Have you enjoyed the worship this morning? Just enjoyed how the band have served us and you know that moment in worship where well it's difficult to describe isn't it you know that moment um, where you can't put your finger on it but it's just you're just lost for a moment you, you, you know you know that you're in his presence. Do you know what I'm talking about? And I've been thinking about that last few months. And I've been wondering if that moment could be extended past the 20 minutes song list. I was wondering if that moment, you see, when I'm in that moment, um, I think anything's possible, really, when I'm in that moment. When I'm in that moment, I find myself really difficult to argue with people when I'm in that moment. It's hard to slap somebody when your hands are in the air. And I've been wondering about whether it's possible to extend that moment past that song into the communion time, into the offering time, into the preaching time. Then I'm kind of like wondering, I wonder if it's possible to extend that time beyond the 90 minutes that we've allocated as the God-given moment. I wonder if I can have that moment at home. I wonder if I can make my decisions in that moment. Why do I have to keep coming out of that moment, coming back into that moment? Why can't I just stay in there? I mean, I, I presume when we get to heaven, we're going to be in that moment for eternity. So why can't we practice that moment a lot more? I find that it's really, really difficult for me to sin in that moment. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. But when I pack that moment up and put it in a box, then I'm a, I go off and do my life, and then I come back, and then we have that song again, and we have that moment, and we have another moment. Why, why can't we just stay in that moment? In, in, in June, 
my life all changed around in June. As you know, I a reluctant follower away from what I was doing into a new chapter of my life, and I really didn't want to. I was a bit grumpy. I never let people know that, you know. But in the in my office, I was packing my books away. Everybody ever packed your office away and you don't want to? It's the last thing you want to do. It's like packing the books in, you know. But I was I was praying, God, if 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 you're taking me into a new season, uh, and you you're changing my life around, then I don't want to go and stand before pastors and um, give them a best sermon. I need you to change me to carry something new into this new season of my life. So I was praying that, and I was. Um, Putting books away. I'm a hoarder of books. You know, I always admire those people who can give books away. You might be here. I, I, I love you. You're, you're an amazing hero of mine. I tried that once. I gave somebody a book, you know, and then had to run after them. And <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll buy it for you. I can't have my book. And <laughs> I'm just hopeless. Um, so I have lots of books. And uh, so I was, I was just throwing them in, the, throwing them in, throwing them in. And then the Lord spoke to me when I wasn't ready, and I, I just picked up the, this book and put it in, and then I just felt really strong. Just a strong impression in my heart. And the, and the, and, and the, and the, and the, the voice within said, you don't talk to me like that anymore, do you? Um, and I, I knew what he was talking about because I looked at the book. I didn't even need to look inside. The book was Tommy Tenney's book, God Chases. Suddenly all the words came flying past my brain, more. <laughs> Do you remember when we used to say more? <laughs> more, Lord. <laughs> all that came running past me. Because like in that season, in the, uh, you know, 20 years ago, in the 90s, the 2000s, you know, I, I, you know, I've been up the mountain and down the mountain, in the river, out the river. I've been everywhere. To I was I was pursuing, chasing, praying, fasting, longing, crying, staying up all night, you know, night fasting, just longing. I mean, my church was so desperate they'd send me anywhere. And I went all over the place. You know, the, if there was a well, I'd go there. You know, Sunderland, Pensacola, to Toronto, wherever it was, I'd, I'd be going there, you know. And the church was so long, pastor, go and get something, go and get something. Oh, pastor's got something. Can't wait for Sunday, pastor's got something. It was a bit of a pressure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the pastor's got something. Oh, I can see, I see his, the way he's walking. You can see he's carrying something. You know, <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And um, but such such longing, and then um, and then the next day, I, you see. Also, along with it, my desire and my praying, and said, God, you, I want you to speak to me. And then and then He did. And then the next day, what I'd been doing over the days before, I'd, I'd begun systematically reading a few weeks ago, just little small little passages of Mark's Gospel. And um, the the. The passage that I read the next day is in Mark 3 and from verse 31. But let me give you context. The context is that Jesus is having a really good time and um, he's doing really, really well. People uh, are coming into the kingdom and this transformation of people's lives and he's really on a high in ministry um, and things are really busy, but crowds are gathering, and wherever he is, people are flocking, and it's um, it's good times. And then come some some challenges to him, and and the first challenge that came to him um, came from um, his family, and his family sent some relatives to him, and. Um, they're really concerned because of his 
work ethic. They're really concerned about the fact that you look like you're going to burn out. And um, because Jesus, it's been reported back to the family, and Mary gets to hear about it, that her son is going without meals. <laughs> no mother wants to hear that, do they? You know, mom. Um, <laughs> and, um, and actually, he's just working flat out. And he's staying up all night. He's getting up early in the morning, and his team don't know where he is. And they're, they're having to search in the dark, and they find him someplace. And you know, and and it's just busy, 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 busy. He's just simply working all the time. And 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 so Mary and the family get really concerned about when they're away, you know. And fam and moms and families do that, don't they? I mean, my mom, she's really concerned about me. She's concerned about me right now, and what I might say next. For the first 21 years of my life, my mom has been saying, well, you're going to move on, yeah? For the last 21 years of my life, she's been, will you slow down, you know? She can't get it right, can you? But that sometimes the, the, family, the families and the family were so concerned of Jesus, the message came back to Jesus and said, look, we're concerned you, you, you get, you're going mad. We're concerned that you're losing your mind. We're concerned that you may burn out and the Lord of the Sabbath might need a sabbatical. But that's not the greatest challenge of your life. That's what I want to say. It is a challenge, but it's not the greatest challenge and not what God spoke to me. The context of, of, of what we're going to read is that shortly after that, then um, some of the know-it-alls came to Jesus. Don't you love it when a know-it-all comes into your church? I met one the other day, and they gave me so many Bible verses in one sentence. It was quite incredible. I thought, wow. You have read the Bible more than me. Um, and they came and they started to judge Jesus' attitude and his motivation for what he was doing in the ministry. It's really difficult to actually stand against that, isn't it? When somebody judges you for your motivation for what you are doing. And actually, what you're doing, Jesus, you're not delivering uh, people uh, from Satan. This is a satanic ministry you've got yourself. This is not of God. It's really hard, isn't it? And you've gone through challenges in your ministry where people come and say, actually, it's not of God what you're doing. We, you know, we don't want to hurt you, but actually, <laughs> you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Because we actually have got the divine truth on this particular point that you are trying to lead the church in. It's really difficult at that moment to really respond to that. But that's not your biggest challenge that you're going to face. This is your biggest challenge that you're going to face. Verse 31, Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Oh no, so now Mary is not just sending people. The mother arrives herself. You know, this is very uncomfortable for you, isn't it? <laughs> then Jesus, I told you to stay at home. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. And the mom turns up. You know you're in trouble when mom turns up. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. And a crowd was sitting around him and they told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. And then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. And here's your biggest challenge. Over familiarity to the presence of the Lord. There's two families, Jesus says. There's one who's managed to get into the house, and there's one who's outside the house. Those outside the house. Luke says that those outside the house could not get into the house because the house was too crowded. However, that's not true, is it? Because they did send somebody in with a message. So if you want to get in, you can get in. And if you want to pursue Jesus, you can pursue Jesus no matter what difficulties are going on in your life. You can pursue him. 
and what we know about houses is that you, if you really want to get to Jesus, you can rip a roof off if you want to really get to Jesus. Jesus, we want you to come out to us. We are your family. Come to us, Jesus. Come to me, Jesus. Because we're ordered. And we have a family name, and we've got identity, and we've got a credibility about the family. And uh, we want to actually come and just bring some guidance and advice to you. Please come to us, Jesus. Let's have order here. There's a bit of a rabble going on in that, in that house, right, that, right where you are. Please come out of the rabble. Please come out of the disorder. Please come away from the mess and all the sweat and grime of what's going on in that house. And come to us, Jesus. We are your family. We are respectable, we are historical, we have the name. Our biggest challenge is over familiarity with what we know. Jesus says, I'm not coming. I'm staying here with the rabble, with the low life, with those who have pursued me, with all the sweat and grime of this house, who are sitting at my feet, who managed to push through the crowd and be here. Wow. Okay, so we'll have a service without you then, Jesus, shall we? And we'll wait for you to come. Over familiarity, I, I, I've got a lot of respect for Mary because I think she struggled throughout her whole life about... Who on earth is Jesus? My son, son of God, son, son of man. I can imagine this mother going, oh, my days, I don't know who you are. It's not the first time that all the familiarity kicked in to Mary's life. We know early on, we know that right at the beginning of Luke, you know the story, that they've been um, to Jerusalem and the Passover, and then he's about 12 years age. You love this amazing story. If, you're, if you've had kids, it's great when you lose them. <laughs> <laughs> what happens then? <laughs> you know, we're talking divorce. <laughs> <aren't we? laughs> it's your fault. No. <laughs> he's 12 years of age. And they return home, and frightening words that these are, thinking he was in their company, they travel on for a day. I wonder, dare I say this, that is it possible that some of the things that were said in the Old Testament about God's presence lifting, God's presence not being with his people, is it possible that that, that could be the same here. Is it possible? Is it possible that the things that are said in the early part of the New Testament, in the Gospels, is it possible that here in 2018, is it possible that we could continue for a day and oblivious that actually we're continuing without the presence, without the moment, without the moment? The moment, you see, is on Sunday morning, Ten minutes into the song set, isn't it? And is that how it works? And we just continue for a day? You see, life is not about the, the existence of God. Life is about the experience of God. So... Um, Thinking, I, I wonder if we've done church services thinking he was with us. Now, of course, we said, no, not in Elam. Not in Elam. And our theology, you see, our theology says, no, it's impossible, not in Elam. See, not, not, well, not in my ministry, every time. So my theology is that God is with me. However, you may not have been this person, but some of us will have at times gone into a different tradition, a different traditional church, 
And we've said, dead ear, innit? No, no, you wouldn't say that, but I may have said it. Um, it's dead here, isn't it? It's just really dead. But we're in the place of faith. We're in a place where they, they believe exactly what we believe. A place where they worship, a place where the word is preached, a place where they have communion, and we say it's dead here. So hold on a moment, then our theology is a little bit flexible. It's a bit little flexible when we're in a dead place. So if it's possible in a, in a dead place, inverted commas, then I think it may be possible that in, an, that in an Elam church, we could get through 90 minutes without the moment. That's right. I remember one Sunday morning, I came into my church, and um, I thought I was at a funeral, and... <laughs> It's like, there's no hands raised. Just like, I looked out and I thought, oh my days, we've got another 70 minutes of this. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, when you want to go home. And I thought, well, I don't know where you are, Lord, but you're not here. I need to get you here. I need to get you here now. Because this is going to be a long time. There's days, looks. And the people, you know. You know, you know these in your church, I know. But it, they were all in mine. Um, and so I did what we all do, maybe, at times. We go for that song. We all have a song. <laughs> uh, I know what I'll do. Where's the worship leader? Get majesty. See, it used to work every time for, for us, the majesty on. You only have to start it. It was like electronic arms came straight up. Everybody standing, tears flowing, majesty. Did it every time. I did that a number of times during the years that I was there, majesty, that would do it. Jesus, where's Jesus, where's Jesus? Oh, let's go to the familiar places. Let's go to the relatives. Do you have him? And we all have got familiar places to go to. If I just go into that familiar place, I'll find him. And he's not there. Manufactured, emotional, something that just can kickstart something. He's not there. And I think, I think it's healthy to come to moments in our life where we admit to ourselves that I've lost the moment. I've lost the presence. And it's a hard one to admit But when Mary and Joseph realized they'd lost him, they did the right thing and they returned. And I think we need to return. And Jesus said, did you, did you not know? You see, there's a table in the Father's house where we fight our battles. There's a table set in the Father for you and me, a table of his presence, a table of fellowship, and that's where we win. And we've got to keep in that place in every aspect of our life, we need, a, we need to learn how to carry the Ark of the Covenant again. We need to learn how to host His presence in our life. 
I think churches divide over many things, but they would not divide if they were hosting his presence. So I think Mary battled throughout her life with over familiarity, point where she's kneeling at the cross in John 19, near the cross stood Mary. And it is the cross of surrender and submission and sacrifice and all of those words. It's the cross of total emptying of your life that will obliterate and smash the challenge of over-familiarity in your life. And let me explain. Jesus says the last words on the cross he's got for Mary and he says, Mother, Mary, no. And people write and say, oh, well, it's because he, he didn't say the words mother uh, because he didn't want to hurt her. It's, that's rubbish. I'm sorry. You know, any mother at the foot of the cross of her son who's been tortured and in a wicked way is, is heartbroken beyond anything you, anything you say to me. It doesn't really matter. It's, no, 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 no. What he's doing is this. Mary, I want to smash familiarity in your life because you are not my mother you are my disciple you are my follower i'm your lord i'm son of heaven i've come to you and now i want you to carry your own cross and follow me it smashes it in her life and then he says to her i'm going to give you a new responsibility and some of you today in this last 12 months, there will be new areas of responsibility. Even within your ministry, you stayed in the same church. Things have changed, and you've moved things around a little bit, and God has given you new opportunity where you take your pursuit of Him, your discipleship of Him, your following of Him, and your desire to spend every moment that you can in every minute of the day in his presence in that new responsibility. Mary, I'm going to give you a new son. John, you follow me through John. You follow me in that new responsibility. Discipleship and responsibility. And then John says to her, and John says from, it says, from that moment on, I took her into my home. John took her into her home. And, 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 and after the cross, after he just died, John says to Mary, right, pack your bags, you're coming into my house. And she had to change. And in order for you to break the over-familiarity in your life, you need to look at your discipleship, which involves cross-carrying, your cross, your surrender, some sacrifice in your life, a bended knee, laying prostrate, giving it all up to Jesus. And it, it needs to be taken into your responsibility of where you are today. And it involves a change in your life. Some of you need to change. And Mary had to go home and pack her bags, get Pickfords and move into a new house, into a new home. And some of you may need to, you may need, need to move into a new home. You may need to move. You may need to Changed. Maybe your life is just a bit boring. Maybe your worship's a bit boring. Maybe you just need to turn everything upside down. Maybe you need to throw your clothes away and buy some new ones because actually blue's nice, but actually, come on. If you're wearing blue, it's lovely. <laughs> yeah, and let me land this and then we, we pray. Because I, I went further, and just recently, I went further recently, and I saw that it wasn't the last time that we see Mary, of course. So I want, I want to know, Mary, how are you doing? <laughs> you know, when, this, when you've learned so much about Jesus and discipleship, how are you doing, Mary? We find her in Acts 1, don't we? And I, I start to read verses around in Acts, and in Acts 1, you know... They're in this upper room. They go up the, up, up the stairs into the upper room. You know that upper room? I remember when I was, when I was a, a teenager, my family, we had just been, we'd been baptized in the Holy Spirit. We were coming out of the Salvation Army. And in the process of moving into Elam, we found this 
church called, it's an independent church called the Upper Room in Halifax. And I used to love going there on a Saturday night um, because the Upper Room, it was a different kind of a church to all that I'd ever, ever imagined. It was a church where the worship was, wow, it was, it had the moment. And, and it had testimonies of people being healed. And it was where I first saw people being slain in the spirit, and uh, things were really active in that uh, in that place. And here, the disciples have the upper room, the upper room where they uh, shared the Passover, the, the upper room where they'd learnt the beautiful poetic prayer of Jesus' life. The upper where he washed feet, yes, even Judas's feet. The upper room where he, he came blazing through uh, the door when they were locked away in fear, saying, look at my nail prints. The upper room where he breathes upon them the Holy Spirit. And now Mary is here in Acts 1, 11 and 12. And Mary is pursuing, and Mary is longing, and Mary, along with the other disciples, are saying, come, Holy Spirit, we want you. I don't know what this looks like, I don't know what it is, but we need your presence. And she's there longing for Jesus, she's longing for the glory of Jesus, she's longing for the Spirit to come. And she's in that moment, pursuing with all of her heart. And she's, it's like where she's way, way back, way back when it first comes to her, when Gabriel first comes to her and says, surprise, I'm going to do a miracle. And she says what you and I say all the time. You're wanting a breakthrough. You're wanting your church to grow. You're wanting healings to be hard. You're coming this morning. You've got so many things that you want God to do. And you may be saying, God, how can this be? How is this going to happen? It's the same prayer that Mary prayed all those years ago. How is this going to be? And Gabriel says, I'm going to give you a message I want you to carry for the rest of your life. It's the Holy Spirit, Mary. The Holy Spirit will come on you. Zechariah had said something similar. Oh, well, I, I don't know. How is this going to be? And, and Gabriel says, listen, I, I've just come from the presence of God. I stand. Why are you asking me? How is this pop possible? I stand in the presence of God. Does not the presence of God mean anything to you? Now, listen, you brass him off. So I'm going to make you silent. Shut up. Until we get through this. And actually sometimes leaders, sometimes we just need to be, sh we just need a Because it's about the presence. You know, Pentecostals are not short superlatives. We, we, we know them all. We can get the whole list out. But maybe we just need to, sh you know, <laughs> shut up. And let him come. What I understand is this, is that you may be in a dark, empty place. You might look out at your ministry. You might look out at your life and you may be thinking, well, I, 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 don't, know how, I don't know how this is going to be. You know, I, I, I'm seeing nothing. I, I don't know where, where miracles. What I know from day one is this, is that from day one there was nothing, but there was someone hovering, waiting to come. The Holy Spirit is hovering over your life, man, woman of God, and he's waiting to come. But he is the most important thing. You know, I think one of the dangers, you know, you will not sin. You, you will not sin now. The majority of people who have been in the ministry a long period of time, thankfully, you're not going to sin over the, the, the sins of the youth, thankfully. I mean, there is always one or two people, you know, but you know, the majority of us we will not we're going to get it wrong over the good of the things that we think are the most important things the good things and that but they're not the best things they're not, they're not the most important things and that's where we're going to go wrong and so we're going to get our flip charts out we're going to get our management skills our leadership skills we're going to get our t uh, 10 principles to get th breakthrough and all of that is good and we need it but it's not the most important thing the most important thing always is the moment of the presence of the Lord. Wow. Brilliant. And, and, and what I know about Bible history and what you know is that throughout the prophets, they're, they're saying the same thing time and time and time again. You know, bless him, Zerubbabel, you've got to give him a pat on the back. He was trying his hardest, yeah? But the people were saying, you know what, I'm not bothered anymore. And so God raised up Haggai and Zechariah and they come along and then, you know, they start trying to help and stuff and then the, a message comes to 
Oh, look, look, they need to know this, 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 this. Listen, this is not going to happen by coercive whipping the people and your messages on commitment. Neither is it going to happen through you going through a whole presentation on we need to get me more pure in this dirty world of ours. No, no, no. It's not by your might. And it's not by your power. Will you listen to me? It's by my spirit. It's by my spirit. So here we are. And I'm saying, if that moment no matter, and you will all have had different moments in that. It's, you know, you must be stiff as a board not to have had any moments in that worship set. They'll have come at different times. That moment was, was the Holy Spirit. It's our responsibility to host Him in our life. I don't know you of you but what I do know is that you need the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life so come Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit we must respond now and then we must respond now before we have dinner. We must respond. Let's welcome him. And the more you practice the presence of the Lord, the easier it is to move into that moment of fellowship. And let's just stay there for a moment. And we want to pray with you. And we want to see a release, mighty release of his presence in your life. Tomorrow you'll be in your churches and you're going to want to see a move of God will do. It starts right now. It starts here. Or just um just play something if you want if you if you are like Mary and you are saying i I want to break the over familiarity i you may know so much you may have been a Pentecostal more years than anybody, and you may have all the gifts and you may have so many abilities. And those are all irrevocable, you know. They'll never be taken from you. But maybe you say, I'm dry and I need him. So just where you are, will you, um, will you stand? Maybe we do that way. Jesus, pour out, pour out. Pour out. He shall add a book or a double soak. He daddy and bond. Just be careful what you say now. Sometimes when we pray, either in English or tongues, kind of like we, we, we kind of like go into a like a. It's like we, 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 sometimes we can, you know, we can come out of his presence praying in tongues. Because we get all noisy and we get all worked up and things. And I, I just really want you to, if you if you pray in tongues, really keep focused. If you,
Jesus, we just uh, pray to Jesus in English. We just keep focused on the Lord. Don't allow any distraction away as you welcome the Spirit of the Lord to wash and fill. Now, He's going to take you to the place of hunger and thirst, and He's going to take you to the place of pain. And, the, and if you are willing to be obedient, and if you are willing to long and desire, and if you're willing to sacrifice other things in your life for the presence, oh my day. Then we know what God has planned and purposed. But I think Elam will explode because of his presence. I think your ministries will multiply because of his presence. Come, Spirit of the living God, fill my life. Let's pursue him right now. Let's pursue him right now. Let's pursue him right now. Come. Come. Fill me. Fill me. Yamahi saw. Hitau paki salapai si. Through and by his symbol call, he lamassot or disabled. Every man, woman, every leader here, our hearts are desperate for you. We cannot do this. We cannot go through the motions. We cannot go for false fire. We cannot pretend. If this is not you, then we don't want it, Lord. It's you we need. Because we're tired of the pressure from people. They're tired to be somebody. They're tired to perform. Tired Preaching, 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 wondering if people are listening. Tired of trying. We cannot do this anymore. And we come to the cross and we die. We die. Lay it down. And we pursue you. You are all that matters to me. We want an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Nothing short of an outpouring, whatever's coming, Lord. Yeah, we want you. A move, sovereign move. Come, Holy Spirit. And we draw near to you and we move. We move towards you. We know that if we move, you move towards us. We draw near, you draw near. We move, we take churches we take our people and we move pushing through the crowd and we want to get to the feet of Jesus come Holy Spirit come This is the moment. This is his presence.
amor acima. Tira matura para ti su punto. Breathe on us. Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. Consuming the fire. Burn me. Burn me. Wind of God, blow. So, Lord, I pray a blessing on these, your children, leaders. Bless them with a holy pursuit. Never-ending desire for your presence. Bless them with the courage to stand against the distractions so that you are the attraction, the presence. Bless them. with the confidence that your presence is all that they need. For in your presence, miracles are born. May this month May you come in a great magnitude, overwhelming, powerful way. And I bless them to host your presence in Jesus' name. keep coming wherever we're thirsty and wherever we're hungry I'm sure we say thank you for a cup of tea but how can you say thank you for a word like that Paul that's just amazing to lead us all back to what it's all about I know it broke your heart to leave missions and I know you only did it because you believe God called you to do so and I'm so grateful that you're going to be working with ministers. Father, we pray for Paul. Pray for Greece. Pray for his children. 
We pray, Lord, as they've packed up the books and did all the things that they didn't want to do, they're now moving into your destiny for their lives. And I pray, Lord, that Paul will lead hundreds and thousands of leaders into the presence of God. I pray this will be a life message. This will not be a message, Lord, for a season. It will be a life message that he'll come back to again and again and again to recenter us. Well, I feel like I've recentered. First, I've just almost had like a back chiropractic. Things have popped back into place in your presence. And Father, we just pray even when we feel like we're surrounded, that we're surrounded by you in your presence. And Lord, it's your presence is how we fight our battles. And Father, we're going to just worship you at the end of this time before we go to into our refreshments. And Lord, I want to pray. Lord, people have come from all over the place to be here today. Lord, I mentioned earlier Shrewsbury, Hollyhead, Lord Birkenhead, people from the Merseyside area. Lord, Stoke. Lord, we've come from all over the place to be here. Warrington. Lord, Crewe. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for every church represented, every leader represented, every leadership team member that's here. That, Lord, I pray for a month of moments that we'll find that moment in the midst of the busyness, Lord, and that we'll find it privately first and then maybe we'll lead our churches into it in a more public way Lord I pray you'll seal Lord I, be, I believe Lord that you've not only spoken to us we are receiving your touch on our lives and we want to end by offering you our praise in Jesus name thanks George
phrase is over in just a moment just to say that is going to be on the website this afternoon um, to download just a suggestion maybe at the start of the year to get your leadership teams together um, that would be a great word to play together in your churches for the whole of your leadership team and just to start the year with some moments together as a team before you get back into the business start the year with some moments in his presence hear that sermon together which is just a suggestion to you um, Richard will, after we've prayed Richard will give us um, how are we going to get the food? I'm sorry to go from the presence of the food. But, um, but before we do that, Phil, Phil's just had two phrases he felt God gave him to pray over us. Just close. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I just felt like God said to me there are two phrases that probably we believe one and we struggle with the other. And each one of us will be different in this. But um, the first phrase was, there is no one more worthy to be present in the presence of the Lord than me. And the other one is, there is no one less worthy to be in the presence of the Lord than me. And I just felt like within this room, we maybe, some people find that first phrase really easy. Yes, okay, there is no one more worthy than me, but we struggle and find other people less worthy in our hearts. And sometimes we find ourselves to be the people who think we are less worthy, but others are more. And God's just saying, no, there is no one more worthy than us. There was no one less worthy than us. And both of those are true. And so I just want to pray for whichever side you're on, that actually the Lord blesses you in that. That the Lord makes you know that you are no more worthy or less worthy than anybody else. You are his. And it's his worthiness that is the important thing. I pray that we go to food and uh, we finish our time here, that we carry something of that with us, that we know that the worth that we have is not a worth that we have created, but a worth that is imparted on us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. Just a note then regarding lunch. Um, it's going to be upstairs in the, the room, which is off the coffee house. The coffee house is closed now anyway, so you've got the coffee house and uh, the room off it just to relax and just enjoy. It's a finger buffet. Uh, there should be plenty there for everyone. As long as we don't gorge ourselves on the first visit, there should be plenty there for everyone. And uh, so let's just obviously be thinking about one another. Uh, there's an earning there as well just to help yourself to, to drinks. And uh, please, please enjoy. Uh, that's been recorded. I'm just looking for the heads up from the guys over there. Yeah, it's thumbs up. That's been recorded. So that'll be up on our YouTube channel a little bit later. But I'll send the link out and maybe we'll try and get that out to everyone. So you've got that anyway. So thank you so much, Paul, for that. And uh, just enjoy your lunch. Amen. And don't forget the 6th and 7th of November, there's a retreat for anybody who may have forgot. Two days. It's two days. One night, it, If anyone has any mobility issues getting upstairs, there is a lift just along the corridor on the left, so you can use that as well. <laughs>